Hello, dear ELL teaching colleagues. Fall is the season of giving. And do I have a gift for you today? Usually, I'm a little bit more modest about my resources, but what started as a four slide long basic survival English vocabulary lesson that I built around a super cute video of animals eating pumpkins in a zoo slowly turned into a 40 slide long lesson or series of lessons that picks up from that basic survival English English practice and builds towards cognitively more challenging tasks that involve a lot of academic vocabulary and concepts. I won't be taking your time to explain every single slide and every single activity because I know you are busy, but I do want to draw your attention to a couple of components in this resource so you can make the best use of it. I will also show you where you can find my other full related language development activities that I have accumulated so far. Let's do it. I do want to start by saying that if you want for your students to stay as engaged as possible and for as much material and language to stick, you want for them to take notes. I have this super basic worksheet so students can take notes to go along with at least some of the slides. It's super basic, but it's enough to keep your students focused and for them to also be writing new vocabulary. We started off by describing a pumpkin and here they can move these little boxes with words and I ask them to say these incomplete sentences. Pumpkins are big, orange, delicious and here I did ask them to help me identify which of these words showed an opinion rather than a fact and of course that was delicious. We also wrote on the actual pumpkin. They love this activity. Then I showed my students this video. It's animals eating pumpkins in a zoo. We paused the video as we named the animals and then I had my students move again the correct names of the animals that were in the video and here you want to draw their attention to plural and singular the names of all of the animals is not necessarily my big goal it's more an opportunity to pronounce perhaps new words to recognize some of the sounds but it wasn't by any means my objective for them to remember the names of all of the animals however i did want for them to be able to build sentences and here they can type i have have a bunch of slides here. We're also using drinking and plurals. For your higher students, you can give them this blank slide and make several copies and then they can find pictures of animals eating and then the rest of the class can type up sentences here. And of course, you know, usually our advanced students need to be challenged cognitively a little bit more because they are ready for more complex tasks if the rest of the class is working on some basic English. So I had my advanced students research whether pumpkins are safe for dogs and to be prepared to explain why they are safe or not safe. It actually is quite interesting. Pets do benefit from eating pumpkins. Moving on, I'm drawing a bridge to us people saying that people also like to eat pumpkins. There is a little video. You choose whether you want to play it. It's a recipe of a whole pumpkin being baked. And then I asked my students to tell me what they think a pumpkin would taste like not the pie, not the soup, not the seeds, but the actual pumpkin. We are expanding the vocabulary, talking about whether pumpkins are healthy. Of course, I ask them to think about it first and to give me their idea whether they think pumpkins are healthy, and then I give them a response. And then we practice it in a close activity with gaps in sentences. That was actually quite helpful. They did remember a lot of new words in this way. And then concluding and naming all of the things that pumpkins contain and that make them healthy, especially for heart. Then we talked about which group pumpkins would go to. I like something like this, but of course you can refer your students to the pyramid as well because there are different views on nutrition these days. Pumpkins belong to the group of antioxidants. And then we talked about what antioxidants are and we brought up the word of molecules and also fighting disease. I had them research online which other foods besides pumpkin 
ingredients contain antioxidants. They either typed up here or on their little worksheet asking them whether a pumpkin is a fruit or vegetable. Botanically speaking, they are a fruit, but we cook it as a vegetable because it is savory. And again, a little bit of a close practice here to remember the new words and sentence structures. Moving on to more academic language. Now we're using math language or geometry language. A pumpkin is a sphere. Talk about 3D and 2D, about measurements. And then another way to measure is to measure its circumference. And we did do this in class. It actually was very, very nice. A lot of students first gave me their guesses of what the big pumpkin in our classroom, what its circumference would be. And then we measured it and said what it actually was. We also looked at the side with inches and then on the back side with centimeters. Simple, basic activity, but so many layers there. And we also talked about how we can weigh it. And again, we were making predictions about our big pumpkin and weighing it in the classroom. After that, I showed them this video of a pumpkin growing. Watch it first, see what all you would like to focus on. I just had my students say such things as we see leaves, it is growing, it is growing fast, it is now big, it's yellow, now it's orange. We made a prediction of how heavy it is and that was a segue to the topic of pumpkin contest. That was quite curious for us. Here is one video of a giant pumpkin being in a contest and there's another video. Again, you can choose not to do this but they seem to enjoy making predictions about the weight. We try to guess what the circumference would be of these pumpkins. Talked about how they grow, how much care it required and then before I ask them to summarize everything they have learned we read these words one more time I had them take turns they saw for themselves how many new words they were able to read correctly or needed a little bit of help or maybe they were not recognizing them at all that was a good needs analysis for me too to see where I miss maybe more appropriate instruction and where I should add more by the way yes I do mark the slides for differentiation for students who are more advanced than newcomers with a triangle and the regular newcomers with a star. I actually showed everybody this slide first and had them use just the pictures to try to remember everything they could say about pumpkins. And then I offered them the one with scaffolds. I worked a little bit backwards here. I really wanted to see how much they truly remembered without extra support. As an extension, we wrote an informational report using the strategy of traffic lights. I do have a video tutorial. Again, watch it first. We didn't watch the entire video. I used the beginning of the video and then the second example. And then we used these graphic organizers that I also included in this lesson for you. When we started writing an informational report about pumpkins, we together came up with a very general topic sentence. There are many interesting facts about pumpkins and then started breaking it down into parts. One of the parts was pumpkin is a fruit but is also a vegetable and then we stopped and explained what that means and also it looks different from other fruit and vegetables and here is where we talked about it being a sphere, it being round and orange and sometimes it's white, sometimes it's yellow. This is one of my students completed graphic organizer. To my students of higher proficiency levels I offered a different topic sentence. Eating pumpkins benefits our health in several important ways. So these students did use information from the pumpkin lesson I taught to everyone. Pumpkins contain potassium, vitamin C, antioxidants, and fiber, but they had to research online for more details. Also next week, the last week of October, we are going to write an argumentative essay and I'm planning to offer this prompt. Do you think pumpkins should be served in the school cafeteria for lunch? Why or why not? Support your statements with reasons and evidence from different resources. I do have a video tutorial and a pack of free handouts for you if you choose to write this argumentative essay. Other fall related materials that I have put together so far, if your students are are okay to learn about Halloween traditions in America, I have a video lesson on my channel and it is also on my Teachers Pay Teachers. I also have free digital worksheets or slides with movable parts that go with that lesson. The link is here. And here is my mini lesson called Build a Ghost, where students get to practice saying and reading and writing body parts, adjectives, and structures he, she has. And then they write their own short 
text to describe their own drawing on paper. I hope this helps and I hope you are enjoying teaching this fall. <coughs> okay, colleagues, I lied. I thought I was done, but as I was editing this video, I also tested out this mini pumpkin emotions lesson. We did this with my middle school newcomers, and actually there were a couple of high proficiency kiddos there as well, and with a couple of high school SLIFE students. It worked out great. It was fun and relaxing, which are two very important things in my opinion when it comes to teaching language learners. If you are interested, I can certainly scan this sheet that I drew with markers and share it as a PDF just let me know in comments or in personal messages. I'll be more than happy to share this. These are sort of like stickers, but not really because here we used push pins, which is even better because it makes these little pieces reusable. I also wanted to say that it's really not just my fault that I keep adding pumpkin activities to this lesson because in Facebook group with the Educator Exchange, Betsy Markman shared an awesome jack-o'-lantern project, like entire lesson, and it's really challenging in a healthy way and it really helps students grow in terms of a variety of skills and vocabulary and in her comments she also has this visual that she found online that also uses pumpkins to teach emotions in other adjectives and I just thought what a coincidence now, I think I am done now signing off here if I have squashed you with all these ideas and overwhelmed you I apologize but I hope you still will have fun teaching this fall bye